From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Monday, January 23rd, 2023. PayPal accounts breached in large-scale credential stuffing attack. PayPal is sending out data breach notifications to thousands of users who had their accounts accessed through credential stuffing attacks that exposed some personal data. PayPal explains that the attack occurred between December 6th and December 8th of last year. The company detected and mitigated it at the time, and by December 20th, it had confirmed that unauthorized third parties logged into the accounts with valid credentials. The electronic payments platform claims that this was not due to a breach on its systems and has no evidence that the user credentials were obtained directly from them. Almost 35,000 users have been impacted by the incident, during which hackers had access to account holders' full names, dates of birth, postal addresses, social security numbers, and individual tax identification numbers. Ransomware gang steals data from KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut brand owner. Yum Brands, the operator of these names and also of the Habit Burger Grill fast food restaurant chains, has been targeted by a ransomware attack that forced the closure of 300 locations in the United Kingdom. Yum Brands operates 53,000 restaurants across 155 countries and territories with over $5 billion in total assets and $1.3 billion in yearly net profit. The impacted restaurants in the United Kingdom have returned to normal operations and are not expected to face any other problems relevant to the cyber attack. Yum Brands has confirmed that data was stolen in the attack but sees no evidence that customer information has been exposed. Odin Intelligence Hack exposes a huge trove of police raid files. Detailed tactical plans for imminent police raids, confidential police reports with descriptions of alleged crimes and suspects, and a forensic extraction report detailing the contents of a suspect's phone. These are some of the files in a huge cache of data taken from the internal servers of Odin Intelligence, a tech company that provides apps and services to police departments following a hack and defacement of its website over the weekend. The group behind the breach said in a message left on Odin's website that it hacked the company after its founder and chief executive, Eric McCauley, dismissed a report by Wired, which discovered the company's flagship app, Sweep Wizard, was insecure and was spilling sensitive data about upcoming police operations to the open web. The hackers also published the company's Amazon Web Services private keys for accessing its cloud stored data and claimed to have shredded the company's data and backups, but not before exfiltrating gigabytes of data from Odin's systems. Google Parent Alphabet to Cut 12,000 Jobs These cuts will affect 6% of Alphabet's workforce worldwide in teams including recruitment and engineering. This comes days after Microsoft announced 10,000 jobs would be lost and weeks after Amazon announced 18,000 job cuts, along with similar announcements from Hewlett-Packard and Salesforce. Daniel Ives of Wedbush Securities said, quote, The layoffs highlight irresponsible spending across a sector basking in hyper-growth. The reality is tech stalwarts overhired at a pace that was unsustainable, and now darker macro is forcing these layoffs across the tech space. End quote. And now, a word from our sponsor, SafeBase. These days, customer trust can be an organization's strongest competitive advantage. But how can you develop and maintain customer trust over the long term? The answer is SafeBase. After implementing SafeBase's Smart Trust Center, many companies see shorter deal cycles, higher value contracts, and stronger long-term customer relationships. Some even achieve a 90% reduction in security questionnaires. You can learn more at safebase.com. That's S A F E B A S E.com. Riot Games hacked delays game patches after security breach. The video game developer and publisher behind League of Legends and Valorant says it will delay game patches after its development environment was compromised last week. The LA-based game publisher disclosed the incident in a Twitter thread on Friday night and promised to keep customers up to date with its investigation. They blamed the attack on social engineering and added that the breach directly impacted its ability to publish patches for its games. Cyber attack on Nunavut Energy Supplier limits company operations. A wide-ranging cyber attack on the Kulik Energy Corporation in Canada's Nunavut territory has crippled the company's administrative offices. 
Officials with the company said the attack started on January 15th, and while power plants are still operating normally, computer systems at the corporation's customer care and administrative offices are unavailable. The company cannot accept bill payments through credit cards, but customers can pay using cash or through bank transfers. It is still trying to determine what information may have been stolen or accessed during the attack. Ren to kill pilots' facial recognition system as a way to exterminate rats. The world's largest pest control group is piloting the use of facial recognition software as a way to exterminate rats in people's homes. Rentakill said it had been developing the technology alongside Vodafone for 18 months. The surveillance technology, which is already being tested in real homes, tracks the rodents' habits and streams real-time analysis using artificial intelligence. Rentakill's chief executive, Andy Ransom, told the Financial Times, quote, The technology will identify which rat has come back, where they are feeding, where they are sleeping, who's causing the damage, which part of the building they are coming from, where they are getting into the building from, and whether it's the same rodent that caused the problem last week. End quote. Last week in Ransomware. Last week, the U.S. and France conducted a law enforcement operation where they seized the domain and arrested the operator of the Bizlato crypto exchange for allegedly money laundering crypto proceeds generated from ransomware and illegal drug transactions. Also last week, Vice Society Ransomware leaked the data for the University of Duisburg Essen in Germany. Shipping software supplier DNV suffered an attack that impacted the ship management software of a thousand vessels. The Los Angeles Unified School District confirmed that social security numbers were stolen in last year's ransomware attack. But in the good news column, Avast released a free decryptor for the Bianlian ransomware, and reports from both Chainalysis and Coveware illustrate that ransomware payments dropped approximately 40% in 2022 as companies refuse to pay and the enterprise invests in stronger security and better backups. This week on Super Cyber Friday, we'll be talking about hacking cloud forensics. We'll be digging into what aspects of the cloud have the most visibility, if security and visibility are at odds when organizations transition to the cloud, and how to use technology to close the skills gap when dealing with cloud forensics. If you want to join in on the conversation this week, just head on over to CISOseries.com and click on our events page to register. And if you're in the D.C. area today, come on out to meet David Spark. He'll be holding an after-work meetup at the World of Beer in Bethesda. Just go to the events page at CISOseries.com for all the information. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 